In this video, we're going to cover how to use the TC Electronic LM2N and LM6N plug-in loudness meters. The LM2N and LM6N are very similar to each other and are much more flexible than the LM1N, having a radar display, true peak metering and a comprehensive settings page. The LM2N is for stereo applications and the LM6N can handle up to 5.1 surround and both have normal and big display options. The LM6N includes loudness logging options which are not available on the LM2N. So for the rest of this tutorial we'll be using the LM6N as the two plugins are so similar but we will make it clear when a feature is only available in the LM6N. The radar display interface is unique to TC Electronic loudness meters and we're going to spend some time exploring how to read and interpret the radar display, which is also relevant to anybody using hardware meters that have got the TC Electronic radar display option fitted, like the touch monitor. There are a number of loudness meters that include a histogram feature that displays loudness history, but only our unique radar display folds back on itself so that you can get a continuous display of loudness history. The outer ring displays momentary loudness, that is the average over the last 400 milliseconds. And the 12 o'clock position on the outer ring is always the appropriate target loudness. The radar display itself shows the short-term loudness, averaging over the last three seconds. The target loudness is displayed as the border between the yellow and green sections, and the low-level point is marked by the border between the green and blue sections. There are also a number of settings which affect the way that the radar displays. The first is rotational speed we can adjust the time it takes for the radar display to complete one revolution from between one minute and 24 hours. Now I tend to use one minute per revolution whilst mixing and then switch it over to four minutes per revolution when I come to do the final pass or layoff. The range that the meter covers can also be set to one of the two EBU R128 range settings. On the plus 9 setting, the meter displays between a maximum of 9 LU to a minimum of minus 18 LU, so a range of 27 LU. On the plus 18 setting, the meter displays between a maximum of plus 18 and a minimum of minus 36 LU, so a range of 54 LU. Now, for most work, I tend to use the plus 9 setting, but if you are working on content with a wide dynamic range, you may well find the plus 18 setting more useful to you. You can also change the resolution of the radar display without affecting the momentary loudness on the outer ring. The default is 6 dB per division, but you can change it to between 3 and 12 dB per division and it's especially noticeable on the yellow sections going above the target loudness. Moving on down the window, below the radar are two numerical descriptor displays, one on the left and one on the right. The right-hand display's default is set to program loudness, the integrated loudness, often shortened to I, which is the average loudness for the whole program. And this is one of two pass or fail criteria in the loudness delivery standards, and you must always reset the integrated loudness at the beginning of each program. Alternatively, with the right-hand descriptor, you can choose from one of four other options. Sliding loudness, loudness range, maximum true peak, or peak to loudness ratio. Sliding loudness, unlike program loudness, is a continuously updated measurement that doesn't need to be reset. And because sliding loudness is completely ungated, it can also be used to spot check sections of a program or as a level setting tool. And you can adjust the window for the sliding loudness from the settings page from three seconds to eight minutes with the default set to 10 seconds. Loudness range, often shortened to LRA, is a measurement for the range of loudness within a program, so how much light or shade there is. 
Normally, a program will not be failed for having too much or not enough loudness range. Rather, it's a tool to help us get a sense of the amount of variation in loudness in a program. The range is described in LU, and to avoid occasional extreme events from affecting the overall result, the top 5% and lowest 10% of the total loudness range are excluded from this LRA measurement. For example, a single gunshot or one long passage of silence in a movie would result in a higher loudness range and skew the result. Loudness range is also a useful indicator of potential dynamic reduction processes in the signal chain. Perhaps if a program is also going to be delivered on a mobile platform, it might be necessary to take steps to reduce the loudness range to suit that delivery platform. And to give you some sense of appropriate values for LRA, if you're mixing for high-definition television or digital radio, then consider keeping the LRA to below 20 LU. Whereas for standard definition television, perhaps keep the LRA to below 12 LU. And if you're mixing content for use on mobiles or will be heard through car radios, then it's best to keep the LRA below 8 LU. It's very important to keep track of the true peak level, as we're now working very close to digital headroom. And so this makes it the second pass-fail criteria in the loudness delivery standards. There is a separate tab in both the LM2N and LM6N, which is a true peak meter. But to keep everything in one window, you can set one of the numeric descriptors to maximum true peak to keep an eye on where your true peak level is. The final option for the right-hand descriptor is the peak to loudness ratio. Now this peak to loudness ratio is effectively the distance between program loudness and maximum true peak. Although the loudness range measures the sort of loudness variations inside a program or a music track, it isn't that sensitive to transient limiting and clipping, which can happen as a result of the loudness wars, especially in commercials and in music production. So peak to loudness ratio is a much more appropriate measure of such squashing, which of course can have an adverse effect on clarity, intelligibility and overall audio quality as a low peak to loudness ratio will show that the program has been heavily crushed, probably to increase the perceived loudness. But of course, in the new loudness workflows, there's nothing to be gained by this strategy, as the loudness will be adjusted to meet the appropriate target loudness. Peak to loudness ratio is also relevant when considering the amount of downstream headroom. For instance, ATSC A85 and EBU R128 provide over 20 dBs of headroom, whilst online services like Soundcheck in iTunes only offer around 15 dBs of headroom. Now, just above the right hand descriptor, the plug in running time is displayed. Now, this is the time in hours, minutes, and seconds since the last time the reset button was pressed. Moving over to the left hand descriptor, the default is set to loudness range, but it can be one of six other descriptors, four of which can also be displayed on the right hand descriptor. The extra two descriptors that can only be displayed on the left hand side are maximum momentary and maximum short term loudness. And these have taken on a greater significance when producing short form content. That's content shorter than one minute in duration, like adverts, promos and trails. People started looking at other ways of creating adverts that had impact, but still met the new loudness delivery specs. One trick was to create an advert where the first 25 seconds or so were very quiet and then drop in a really loud payoff line. But of course, when the loudness was averaged over the whole ad, it would still meet the target loudness. Consequently, in a number of territories, they've added a requirement for a maximum short term or maximum momentary loudness for any short form content. For example, the PLoud group responsible for the EBU R128 spec have recently published a revision to R128 for short form content that specifies that the highest short term loudness can go is 5LU, 
or the highest that the momentary loudness can go is 8 LU. And so you can set the left-hand descriptor to display either the maximum momentary or maximum short-term loudness, as well as the other four options that you can also display on the right-hand descriptor. In the top right of the plugin window are buttons to pause and reset the integrated loudness, as well as an indicator to display whether the plugin is in play or stop mode. The reset button clears all the current measurements and you should use the reset at the beginning of each program so that the integrated value is only made up of measurements for the program that you're currently working on. The pause button is useful when you're mixing where you can put the integrated measurement process into pause so that whilst you're reworking a section of a program you're not distorting the integrated value. Then once you're happy with that section you can roll back disable the pause and carry on through the program. As well as the radar page, there are three other pages in the LM2N and LM6N plugins. On the PPM page, which stands for Peak Program Meter, is a true peak meter. Now this shouldn't be confused with any other type of PPM. After all, most PPMs until recently were quasi peak reading meters and so didn't read all the peaks whereas a true peak meter will read and display all the peaks, including those that happened between samples. Consequently, true peak meters give a much better indication of headroom and the risk of distortion in downstream equipment like sample rate converters, data reduction systems and consumer equipment. Although it's not a problem to have true peak level going up to minus 1 or minus 2 dBFS in production, Legacy platforms or some data reduction codecs may distort unless the true peak is kept a little bit lower. So with Dolby AC3 and other low bit codecs, a target of minus 3 dBFS should be considered as the limit. Notice also that the meter scale actually extends above 0 dB full scale. Having the true peak meter display higher than 0 dBFS is useful so you can see if there are any issues, like perhaps having used a sample based limiter rather than a true peak limiter upstream from the meter. Also on the PPM page, there is a smaller version of the momentary loudness meter as well as the same descriptors that are on the main radar page. Next, we have a stats page, which displays in numeric form all the key descriptors. The statistics at the top was the time from when the plugin was instantiated or since the reset button was last clicked. There are a selection of factory presets covering the main delivery standards for broadcast work, as well as CD mastering, film and mobile applications. And these presets enable you to use the plugin for a wide range of applications beyond broadcast audio post production. In both the LM2N and LM6N plugins, there is a fourth page that covers all the detailed settings. It will display the settings for the selected preset, in this case, preset 06, which is the EBU R128LU setting with a target loudness of minus 23 LUFS. Now you can study all the detailed options of this window in conjunction with the manual, but I wanted to highlight just a few of the settings that are available here. As you may have seen already, it is from here that you can adjust the speed of the radar display from 1 minute per revolution to 24 hours per revolution, and also the range of the momentary meter choosing either the plus 9 setting or the plus 18 setting. You can also set the point at which the momentary meter turns from green to blue to help give a visual indication if the loudness is getting a little low. Over on the right hand side, you can set the window for the sliding loudness descriptor from 3 seconds to 8 minutes. It's also possible to set the radar to black and white using this colour option and setting it to desaturated. The desaturated mode is finding a lot of favour in film work as it's easier on the eye, especially when working in a darkened room. Just above this, but only on the LM6N plugin, is a surround channel order option. This enables you to set the order of channels in a surround capable DAW. 
Note that for Pro Tools, this should always be set to Film, as Pro Tools always uses the Film Channel order internally. However, in other DAWs, you may need to set the Channel order to match what you're using in your particular DAW. Whilst we're looking at features only available on the LM6 plugin, we should take a look at the logging features available in the LM6N. In the settings window, you can enable logging on the LM6N. Once enabled, when the plugin is opened or the reset button is pressed, a log file will be created in the log file folder, the location of which can be specified on the settings page. You can also use the Reveal option, which on the Mac systems will use the Finder and on PCs will use Window Explorer to reveal the location of the log files. Each LM6N log file is simply a text document that can be opened in any text editor. And of course, you can easily copy and paste the information from that log file into any other application. Each LM6 log file will contain the following. The plugin version information, which is in the header section, then the overall statistics, and then the actual loudness log with one line per measurement in the following format, with the data separated by tabs. So you've got date, time, and loudness value. And of course, having tab separated data enables you to import that section into a spreadsheet. So, in this video, we've explored the LM2N and LM6N loudness meter plugins and seen how the unique radar display with all its options is a very useful loudness meter.